Hello, I am uh, Nicolo Maldina and I teach Italian literature at the University of Bologna, where I work mostly on Dante Alighieri and on medieval Italian literature. Today I'm going to discuss with you a poet from the Italian Middle Ages, Dante Alighieri, and his masterpiece, The Divine Comedy or The Comedy. Dante Alighieri is, as anticipated, the most important uh, European uh, <clears throat> medieval poet and uh, perhaps uh, the most important Italian poet ever lived. Being born in 1265 in the city of Florence in Tuscany and dying in Ravenna in 1321. The main reason why this man did not live his entire life in his home country is because Dante was not simply a poet, was not simply an intellectual, but was also a politician, was a man engaged to, with uh, the politics of his time, mostly in the city of Florence. And due to his political engagement, Dante was exiled from Florence in 1302. This date and this event, 3002 and the exile, is of extreme importance because uh, this uh, date and this event mark a milestone in Dante's life. Before the exile, Dante lived in Florence. After the exile, Dante traveled throughout several cities that uh, are located, uh, roughly speaking, in the broad region of northern Italy, including Ravenna. He spent his exile also writing, writing pieces of literature, mostly the divine comedy, the comedy. So the poem that we are going to talk about, the comedy, can be defined as the work of Dante's exile. And it took uh, the second half of his life to get this uh, big poem done. Dante started to write uh, the comedy some uh, when around 30 or 7, 13 or 8, i.e. 5 or 6 year, years after his exile from Florence. And he kept writing the, the comedy up until his death in Ravenna in 3021. The Commedia is uh, a big poem that narrates a very simple story. The simple story that is narrated in the comedy can be defined as autobiographical. This journey is a journey throughout the three realms of the Christian afterlife, hell, purgatory, and paradise. So for the Christian afterlife, we do have two uh, eternal places, hell, where sin is punished, and paradise, where virtue is rewarded. But when Dante visits the afterlife, i.e. before the Armageddon, we do have a third realm, the purgatory, a realm that is there to hallow the souls to continue to repent and to purify themselves. It's a place that has a limited existence, i.e. after the, the death of the Christ and before the Armageddon. This poem, comedy, has indeed a very simple story, the story of a journey of a man, Dante, in the afterlife. But building on this very simple narrative, Dante introduces in the comedy a lot of themes, a lot of um, references to both classical, biblical, and medieval culture and history, and so on and so forth, which makes the comedy a, an encyclopedic poem. The narration of the journey that Dante, the visit that Dante did in the spring of 1300 in the three, three realms of the other world encompasses the encounter with souls the souls that are punished in hell, that are purifying themselves in purgatory, and that are rewarded in paradise. The encounter of Dante with each of these souls is narrated in full and entails 
a, a, the story of this soul or a discussion on the sin that he, has, he or she has committed or the virtue that he or she has practiced, which means that in, in each kind of the commedia, you, fi you find uh, something like uh, a, a word of references that are to, as anticipated, both ancient and medieval world culture and politics. Among the many suggestions of, uh, of the comedy, the many themes that are present in the comedy, I shall focus today on one of the key features of the poem itself. Most precisely, more precisely, by addressing the topic of uh, the representation of Dante as a penitent, we are addressing one of the fundamental features of the comedy as a whole. But before we can discuss more directly this choice to represent himself as a penitent is important to our understanding of the comedy. And if you read Purgatory, you can find almost in every canto precise references to the rituals of, of penitence. And I want to focus not on the way in which Dante represents the souls he encounters in, in Purgatory, but the way in which Dante represents himself. If you take the comedy and open to the first page, what you read in English translation is the following. Midway in the journey of our life, I came to myself in a dark wood, for the straight way was lost. You see that I've read just the first three lines of the poem, and Dante puts himself at the very center of the poem. I came to myself where in a dark wood. And this dark wood stands as a, both a physical and a symbolic place. The symbolic meaning of the journey can be, <clears throat> can be um, seen quite clearly in a relatively small expression that Dante uses in those verses. I, in the first line of the, of the poem, midway in the journey of our life, our life. Dante is standing out as the character of the poem as a representative of uh, every man. And uh, in the process of living our life, uh, at a certain point, uh, midway in the journey of, of our life, which means uh, at the age of 35, because uh, at the time when Dante wrote the comedy, the belief was, was that a man or a woman would live for more or less 70 years, which means that Alf is 35, which locates to 1300, because Dante, as anticipated, was born in 1265. This said, it is important to stress that the centrality of the self in, in the comedy, the fact that the comedy is an autobiography, doesn't really mean that uh, is a, a selfish piece of, uh, of literature. Of, uh, the second symbolic meaning refers to the place where the opening scene took place, i.e. the dark wood. I came to myself in a dark wood. And the symbolic meaning of this wood is made clear by Dante himself in the third line that goes for the straight way was lost. The straight way is the way that every Christian should walk, the way of virtue. And if you lost this way, you fall into sin. And the sin is represented from, by the dark wood. Dante does not tell us in those first lines what sin he has committed. And we shall see that it will take a long time to the reader to open the page in which Dante tells what is the sin he has committed. As for now, let's stick to Inferno 1, to the first canto of the Commedia, by saying that the need to exit the dark wood, it's at the very center of the first canto of the poem, and <clears throat> 
on of the comedy as, as a whole. The journey, in fact, that Dante understates in, in the comedy, the journey that is narrated in the comedy, the journey throughout the three realms of the afterlife is the way for Dante as the character of the poem to exit the dark world. Of course, this scene has a symbolic meaning, the three beasts stands as uh, uh, symbols of uh, different vices that uh, are presented as impediments mm, that does not allow men to, to escape from this condition of uh, loss in, in the dark wood, in the wood of sin, in this sinful, sinful condition. At this point, Dante meets another, another man or a soul, the soul of the great Latin poet Virgil. And Virgil explains to Dante that he needs to undertake a different journey. It is not possible for him to exit the dark wood by climbing up the mountain as he was trying to do because of the presence of those vices, of those beasts. And what he is supposed to do is to undertake a different journey. And this different journey as explained towards the end of the first canto by Virgil himself is a journey that will let Dante to see, and this verb is central, to see the souls of hell, meaning the souls of those who have committed the sins during their lives and for this reason are punished in hell. He, Dante, will need to see the souls that are in purgatory, meaning the souls of those who have committed sin but have repented for having committed those sins. And so, will be allowed to gain paradise, but uh, as for now needs to fully repent themselves by undertaking a penitence, another worldly penitence in the second realm of the Christian afterlife. And uh, lastly, Dante will need to see the souls of paradise, meaning we need to see the souls of those who have practiced virtue and for this reason are rewarded by God. It is important to consider this verb, to see. Dante needs to see those souls so as to exit the dark world, so as to save himself from this very dangerous condition that is represented by the dark wood and by the beasts. This is a clear example of how Dante reflects some penitential practices that are uh, <clears throat> widespread in 13th, 14th century Italy in the post Fourth Council of the Lateran Europe. Because if you take some time to read the treatises and the manuals for confessors that were produced after the Fourth Council of the Lateran, uh, you will notice that uh, those uh, treatises and those manuals uh, um, suggest the reader uh, some uh, topics that uh, are functional to exhort the audience to repent for, for the sins they have committed. So to practice penitence, to confess their sin so as to purify themselves. And among those topics, the most effective is judged to be the representation of the otherworldly condition of souls. If you take a man or a woman and you tell clearly them what will happen to them if they continue to sin in the to commit sin in the afterlife, well, then this man or these women will repent from the sin because he or she does not want to be punished in, in hell. Similarly, if you clearly depict to someone the reward of 
paradise, the reward that waits in paradise those who have practiced virtue, that you will instill in them the, the desire to be blessed in paradise, which means that you will exhort them to practice virtue and not vice, so as to be rewarded by God in paradise. This sort of theological paranetic idea that was widespread in the European, um, in, in Europe at the time of Dante, is precisely there behind the reason why Virgil tells Dante that he will need to see what happens to the sinners in hell and what happens to the virtuous in paradise so as to find a way out from the dark wood. So Dante undertakes a journey that is, from a narrative point of view, a journey throughout the afterlife, but from a moral point of view, is a journey of conversion from the sinful condition described in the first lines of the comedy to mm, a different condition, a condition of a man who has repented for the sin he has committed and thus is uh, um, fully purified from, from this sin. And more precisely, you need to read the entire first cantica, the inferno, the hell, and you need to read the entire second cantica, the entire second part, purgatory. Because it's only at the end of purgatory, before visiting paradise, that Dante explains the reason why he went lost in, in the dark wood. The final cantos of purgatory are devoted to a very significant encounter, probably one of the most, if not the most important encounter that Dante as a character of the comedy makes in the poem. At the end of Purgatory, Dante is in the Garden of Eden, and in this place he meets a woman, a woman called Beatrice. Beatrice is Dante's beloved woman. I anticipated that Dante wrote during his Florentine period a lot of lyrical poems. The most important work that Dante wrote in Florence is called the New Life. The, in Italian it goes uh, the Vita Nova, the Vita Nuova. And it is the story of his love for a woman called Beatrice. And this woman is here. Dante meets this woman in the summit of purgatory. Beatrice is a Florentine that dies at the age of 20. So dies young and is dead when Dante locates the, the journey that he as a character undertakes in the comedy, which is in 1300. And so Dante lost Beatrice in his uh, youth, because Beatrice died young. And then now, after 10 years, because Beatrice died in 2090, after 10 years in the fiction of the comedy, he meets again his beloved Beatrice as a soul, as a soul blessed in paradise. But he does not meet Beatrice in paradise. He meets Beatrice in the summit of the Mount of Purgatory. Dante finds Beatrice that as uh, come down, come here from paradise to help Dante, because Dante will visit paradise under the guidance of Beatrice. So Beatrice came down to the Garden of Eden to take Dante and together with Dante to visit again paradise, to go to paradise. This is the most fundamental encounter of the entire comedy, and it is a rather strange encounter, because if we, based, based on what I have just said, this is the scene in which Dante meets 
is beloved after 10 years. And so we would imagine this as to be a joyful encounter. Mm -hmm. But it is not quite so, because Beatrice is angry to Dante. Beatrice explains to Dante the reason why he got lost. And this is a central moment that again reflects the late medieval practice of penitence. Why? Because if you read again the treatises and the manuals for confessors produced after the Fourth Council of, of the Lateran, you will find that it is clearly stated that to repent, in order to repent for a sin, it is vital that the sinner knows clearly what sin he or she has committed. Because you can commit sin for several different reasons, but it is vital that before you repent, you know what you did wrong. Dante, in purgatory, after having experienced hell and purgatory, at the end of purgatory, Dante is purified for the sin he has committed. If you read the final canto of Purgatorio, you will find the complex ritual according to which Dante is washed mm, by the water of two rivers. Mm, and this ritual is the ritual of purification of Dante that must took place before entering to paradise. You cannot enter paradise if you are lost in the dark wood. You cannot walk a step into paradise if you are far away from the straight way. This is the moral sense. So that, that is why before entering to paradise, i.e. at the end of purgatory, Dante undergoes this penitential ritual. And this is the reason why Beatrice explains to Dante the nature of the sin he has committed. What Beatrice says, however, is not self-evident, is not extremely, extremely clear. And we, we shall read now what Beatrice, is, Beatrice says to Dante. And we are reading from uh, Purgatorio, Purgatory Canto 30, the, the, the speech that Beatrice addressed to Dante, talking about the reason why he got lost in the dark wood. Beatrice says, hi, looking on sustained him for a time. My eyes, when bright with youth, I turned to him and led him with me on the road to truth. You see that uh, again, Beatrice is referring to the journey of Dante's life. The road to truth. The road to truth is uh, something like the straight way that Dante, that Dante refers to in the first lines of the poem. And what Beatrice is saying here is that she, as Dante's beloved, was capable of sustaining Dante to keep Dante on the straight way. Hmm. So Beatrice has, the love for Beatrice has also a moral value, okay? It's something that improves Dante's moral life, helping him to keep walking the straight way. But Beatrice goes on by saying, and I'm again quoting, then on the threshold of my second age, I changed, took different life. And he at once drew back and yielded to another glance. This is the problem. The problem is that Beatrice sustained Dante on the way to truth, but when, when she was alive, but at a certain point she dies. Hmm? I anticipated that Beatrice's death, death locates in 1290, and after this moment, Dante did not remain faithful to Beatrice. 
not be, being faithful to Beatrice after her death means to find himself in the condition described, described in the first lines of, of the poem, means to be sinful. Being sinful meaning being away from the road to truth. That's to express this, this concept in Dante's own, own term. And Beatrice goes on by saying that this is surprising because uh, Dante loved her when she was alive. After her death, Beatrice, Beatrice is in paradise as a blessed and so is more beautiful according to the Christian theology. And so Dante should have uh, had more reasons to love Beatrice, but he did not. What he did is to move away from Beatrice and fall in love with someone else. I anticipated that the way in which Dante presents it, the sin that he has committed is not precise. Dante does not say, okay, I did this, this, and this. But he represents this sin metaphorically, metaphorically as a betrayal to Beatrice. But we can easily interpret this metaphor by saying that if Beatrice is dead and is in paradise, the condition is that of a living man, Dante, loving a deaf woman, Beatrice, a blessed. And the very desire to be again with her would inspire him the ambition to be in paradise after death and so would inspire him the, the <clears throat> uh, natural condition of a virtuous man. On the contrary, by forgetting Beatrice and falling in love with another woman, Dante remains on an earthly perspective and this is the problem. And the story of the comedy is also the story of the regaining of Beatrice, refalling in love with, with Beatrice and going back. So Dante represents himself as a sinner that repents from the sin and at a certain point is purified from the sin according to the earthly ritual of confession. He gets a person, Beatrice, that explains to him what the problem is and after he is purified by uh, washing himself in the two rivers that I have mentioned. This is the sort of penitential trajectory of the main character of the poem, but this is not the conclusion of this penitential trajectory because after this purification, Beatrice says something else, something else to Dante. And uh, I will, uh, I would like to conclude my, my lecture by uh, commenting with you this uh, second part of, uh, of the speech, of Beatrice's uh, speech in, at the end of, of Purgatory. But before doing so, we must focus on one, one, question that we have not yet addressed. The question is, why Dante is allowed to see the other world so as to repent? Why Dante is exceptional as a character of the comedy? Because uh, every man can repent for the sin, can uh, go back to the straight way by repenting on earth, by confessing him or herself, and by undertaking all the earthly rituals of confession and penance. But Dante, as a character of the poem, is represented as someone who is hallowed to do this in an exceptional way, i.e. visiting the other world before his, his death. This is a, a, a big problem, a big question. At the very beginning of the comedy, in the second canto, right after the moment in which Virgil explained to him that he will need to go to hell, purgatory, and paradise. 
Dante as a character of the poem says to Dan, to Virgil, I, I'm not quite sure that I am allowed to walk in, in the afterlife, mm. being alive, because this is something that needs to be allowed by God. In Purgatorio, Purgatory, Canto 32, and Beatrice is uh, exhorting Dante to look carefully to what he sees. And he does so by saying that he will need to, he, he needs to look clearly what he sees in the afterlife because he will need to narrate this vision or more precisely to narrate what he sees to other to other people when he will be back on on earth what does it mean it means it means that dante is told here for the very first time in the comedy but you you will have several other passages in in the paradiso in which dante is told the very same the very same thing. This means that Dante is allowed to see the other world, not just because he needs to purify himself, not for a selfish personal reason, but also because he will need to narrate this, this story, this journey to others. In this sense, the comedy is a poem that explains to the reader the reason why it was written. This poem was written because Dante was told to write the story of this exceptional, exceptional journey. And this is what uh, he can be called the prophetic nature of Dante's text. Being a prophet in the biblical Christian tradition, not uh, he or she who can predict the future, but he or she who acts as someone who is told by God a message and repeat this message to mankind. Being the prophet, a man who tells people to mankind a message received directly by God. Dante is precisely a prophet, according to the fact that he is told to narrate what he was allowed to see in the other world. So in this uh, sense, uh, Dante concludes his own penitential, penitential journey as the main character of the comedy by mm, becoming a prophet. The author of a book that is written because uh, God himself wanted it to be written for the benefit of the world. And uh, it is now clear that uh, the sort of uh, autobiographical status of, of the comedy is based upon a trajectory that uh, looks like a trajectory from sinner to repentance to purification, but ultimately. It is not limited to this because after purification, you have the prophetic investiture of, of the author and of the character of, of the comedy. And so the journey that characterized the most the, the, the status of the character, the main character of the comedy, is that from sinner to, to prophet.